Hello DevOps people, welcome to Full Stack Live, it's Retro Saturday. On a very rainy and stormy day here at on the east coast of Ireland, I hope the weather is better way where you are, wherever you are. So good morning, good afternoon or good evening. I hope you're doing great. I am doing great. Things are going awesome. And I'm happy to be back with our second Retro Saturday. If you are at all familiar with the stream, you know that I'm very nostalgic about historic computers, historic operating systems, all kinds of stuff. From back in the 80s when I started computing or even further back in the 70s when I really didn't know what a computer is. Um, so today we are going to do another um, dive into computing history. Uh, and if you are not familiar with the stream, well, you do know that I'm nostalgic now and happy um, uh, welcome. I'm very happy that you are here. Um, this channel is about all kinds of uh, IT stuff. I'm uh, a CTO by trade. I've been into system administration since 1993. Um, before I did web development and other stuff, I started in computing in 1984 uh, with a Commodore VIC-20 and since then I've been into computers more than probably is good for me. On the other hand, it uh, does pay for my shoes. So um, today I'm going to do something um, that's not about current tech, it's not about Rails programming, it's about open VMS. So um, what I'm going to do today is start a simulation of a historic computer system named VAX and I'm going to install open VMS on it. Let me do some quick housekeeping here. That's all right. Good. So what is open VMS? Let's start with that. Open VMS is an operating system. I'm reading from Wikipedia here. It's a multi-user, multi-processing, virtual memory-based operating system designed for use in time sharing, batch processing, and transaction processing. It was first released by Digital Equipment Corporation, short DEC, in 1977 as VAX slash VMS for its series of VAX mini computers. So, um, even I have been very surprised that uh, back in 1977 there was technology around that allowed time sharing with multiple people running programs on the same machine and uh, having the computing power and the operating system support for that is really surprising and an amazing feat. OpenVMS also runs on DEC Alpha systems and the HP Itanium based families of computers, which are historic now too. OpenVMS is a proprietary operat operating system, but source code listings are available for purchase. So the Open in OpenVMS doesn't stand for open source software. Um, it is only there to suggest that it supports standards that were regarded as open computing standards back in the day, most of uh, all uh, the POSIX standard. VMS is not a Unix-based system. It's more or less a competitor to all the Unix systems that came up during the 70s. Um, so it's um, a bit different, you will see. The name VMS is derived from Virtual Memory System, for one of its principal architectural features. When process priorities are suitably adjusted, it may approach real-time operating system characteristics. I think that's also the reason why open VMS and VAX machines are oftentimes found in industrial settings, because um, it uh, has these capabilities. The system offers high availability through clustering, and the ability to distribute the system over multiple physical machines. Again, this is 1970s technology. 
This allows the system to be tolerant against disasters that may, di that may disable individual data processing facilities. OpenVMS contains a graphical user interface. A feature that was not available in earlier original VAX VMS releases prior to the int introduction of DEX VAX station systems in the 80s, the operating system was used and managed from text-based terminals such as the VT100, which provide serial data communications and screen-oriented display features. So far on VMS and um, we are going to use a terminal-based um, access today as well. So, um, just a bit up about the VAX. VAX is a line of computers developed by DEC in the mid-70s. Um, basically, the VAX systems were the successor machines to the PDP-11, uh, at which we took a look last week. Um, the PDP-11 was a 16-bit machine and VAX um, uh, replaced it more or less with a 32-bit architecture. And uh, actually, um, the original name of these machines uh, is a reminder of um, their ancestor because these machines were called VAX-11, uh, uh, similar to PDP-11. So um, in 1977, there was the VAX-11-780. And from there, of course, there were multiple systems with um, more capabilities. And later, VAX systems were replaced by the Alpha, processor-based architectures, and then uh, HP Itanium, which wasn't quite a success. Um, and I'm not sure how far the x86 port of OpenVMS uh, has gone. Um, there is one, but I'm not sure if uh, that's something that people actually use or if they stick with Alpha and Itanium-based systems. All right. In terms of operating systems, the native VAX operating system is uh, OpenVMS, previously named VAX slash VMS. Um, it got uh, renamed to OpenVMS in the early 90s when it was ported to the alpha architecture, um, modified to complain, comply with uh, POSIX standards. And... Um, other alternative operating systems are Unix systems like BSD Unix um, or um, more recently NetBSD and OpenBSD um, also run on VAX models. Even though I think they were called mini computers, they could easily um, dominate a room uh, when you had a, a very big VAX system. It could uh, easily cover a whole wall of a room uh, with uh, processing modules and storage modules, tape systems and all that stuff. Uh, so pretty impressive and um, I guess not the kind of computer you would uh, power from a single 110 or 22 volt uh, mains plug. Uh, you probably need a three phase uh, current in order to, to run these machines. We do not. I do not own a VAX. Uh, I don't intend to own one because I couldn't afford even uh, powering it on for, for a few hours. Um, instead, we are going to use a simulation. There is a great project, um, and a great open source project called SimH, S-I-M-H. Um, that is able to simulate historic computing platforms. Last week we used it to simulate the PDP-11 and today we are going to use it to simulate a VAX. And uh, on this simulated VAX I'm going to install OpenVMS. Before we get into the weeds, um, as always, let's make this thing interactive. Um, while I have no problem with uh, running a two-hour monologue, it's much more interesting and much more fun if we make it interactive. So if there's anything you'd like to ask or anything you'd like to contribute, please do so. Pop into Twitch chat and let me know what you think. Alrighty, so um, let's switch to our terminal.
Sorry about that. I didn't set my scene here up correctly. Now we should have um, sound. Let me know if it's okay. Uh, everything else should be okay. Good. Tim Morgan, thanks for uh, reminding me to, to switch on the sound. Welcome to Full Stack Live. Happy to have you here. Um, thanks for the feedback. Uh, so let's start again. Um, I didn't, um, you didn't miss much. Um, what I have here is the d uh, home directory of my simulated VAX. Um, there is the open vms.ini file that contains the setup for our simulated hardware and we'll take a closer look in, in a second. And the ka655x.bin file is the actual CPU microcode that we have to load in order for the machine even to start. In the open VMS folder, I have um, a, a number of backup files from a previous installation and two ISO images that I've created. So we have uh, some installation ma media. Um, it's a bit of, uh, a bit tricky to get uh, data in and out of these simulated machines. And um, if it's uh, a lot of files, uh, an ISO image uh, that you can then treat as a CD-ROM drive inside the simulation is oftentimes the best way. So even for the single license file, I've chosen um, this approach. And I guess it's time to take a look at the openvms.ini file. These ini files get loaded by um, the SimH simulator. Here you define how your hardware setup is supposed to look like. And um, that starts with this load command here, um, where we load the microvax CPU microcode. These machines are 32-bit machines, so they were able to address up to four megabytes of RAM which was a massive amount in, in the 70s. Um, even a whole operating system could operate in uh, a bunch of kilobytes, not megabytes. So um, that's pretty impressive. And we, we have a, a moderate setup here with a half of a gigabyte of RAM. Uh, this set CPU idle only allows the CPU to, to run idle without um, drawing too much processing power. Then we have attach commands here that um, add basic hardware components. Um, here we attach non-volatile RAM that allows this machine to store um, boot up information for the next time we start the machine. Even if it has been switched off and uh, powered down. And then we have the sections for our disk drives. We have to define the type of disk drive uh, we attach. In this case, we are using RA92 type hard disks. Uh, RQ0 is such a hard disk, and um, it's attached to a file on my disk here named RQ0.dsk. The same goes for, DUA, uh, for RQ1 and RQ2. RQ3 is defined as an RRD40, which is a CD-ROM drive. Um, and this, in turn, is attached in read-only mode to RQ3, and it's also an ISO file on my disk. Later, we're going to attach the ISO file for the license that I need. Um, just a short side note on licensing. Uh, as I've said before, OpenVMS is a proprietary operating system, so you can't simply go somewhere and download it. Um, it's not openly available, and you actually need a license to run it. Fortunately, HP, who purchased Compaq, who purchased uh, digital equipment, um, have a hobbyist program where you can apply for a hobbyist license to run OpenVMS and uh, after a successful application you can ask them for download links um, and that's exactly what I did. I applied for a license. I had to be a member of 
Decius. Uh, Decius is the Digital Equipment Corporation User Society, society and Decius uh, members are um, eligible for open VMS licenses. So I applied and got the download links and that's exactly where I got this ISO file from and also the software that we are going to install later. Some of the simulated hardware in SimH can be networked uh, and the VAX platform is one of them. However, um, uh, this is pretty hard to do on a Mac where I'm running the simulation at the moment. And um, yesterday I've set up uh, a spare Raspberry Pi to do the same and uh, it's much easier there. However, the Raspberry Pi needs to be attached via Ethernet and I simply didn't have the time to uh, see how I can uh, get um, a wired network to the Raspberry Pi. I'd probably have to um, attach it to my uh, uh, Wi-Fi router downstairs and uh, I didn't have the time to, to take care of all that. So um, we'll do without networking. I don't think we are going to get to networking anyway today. So then uh, here I'm disabling other types of uh, devices. I think TS is a tape drive. Um, so we don't need that because we're installing from CD-ROM. And uh, these commands here will allow us to auto boot into the system without too much hassle later, as soon as the system is started. The last command here is boot CPU, which actually starts the machine. And I'd say, let's do exactly that. I can start the simulation by simply saying vax and then my open VMS uh, ini file. And uh, here it's first asking us for the general language and I'm choosing for English United Kingdom even though I'm not in the UK, uh, just in a neighboring EU country. And that's it. The fax has now started and um, we need to boot it and uh, for that there's the boot command and I need to tell it where to boot from. The only medium we have at the moment is the CD-ROM drive because um, our uh, disks are completely clean um, and uh, inside of the operating system here, what was called RQ in the configuration file is now called DUA. Uh, so RQ3 becomes DUA3. And now the system is booting from the CD-ROM drive. I have no idea um, how long this would take on actual uh, hardware. Something went wrong. Um, it says device offline and got me back to the simulation. So let's go back to our configuration file. But it's strange. I actually attached the open VMS installation disk. Huh, interesting. So let's start it again. So we must tell any file open error. What is going on here? It didn't actually find the ISO file. So even though I'm now at the boot prompt of the machine, I can go back to the simulation by pressing uh, Ctrl E. Oh, F word. Somehow I've lost the installation disk. Okay. Well, that is a bit of a blocker, I'd say. Uh, 
let's hope there is uh, still a copy of that. Otherwise, I might have to copy it either from the web or from my Raspberry Pi where I transferred the stuff yesterday. Okay, so let's take a look at what this Vax VMS 073 here is. Um, no, that's a backup. I have no idea how I deleted that. Well, let me quickly check if it's still on my Raspberry Pi so I can copy it over. Not even on here. So I must have lost it a while ago. That's very strange. Okay, so plan B. Let's see how quickly we can download an image. Okay, this is going to take five minutes or so. All right then. Um, at least you can see now that um, the simulator has recreated these disk files. They uh, didn't exist before. Um, I had renamed them to .back files just to um, preserve an, a working version of the machine. And um, they get autom created automatically if they don't exist. Uh, it might actually... No, it did not create the ISO file because that wouldn't make any sense. It's a read-only file anyway. It might have created the file if um, I wouldn't have attached it as stash r, as read-only file. Um, then it would create a zero um, byte open VMS VAX 073 file, which wouldn't help us in any way. So, uh, that's why it's missing and uh, yeah it must have uh, fallen victim of my cleaning rage earlier this week but uh, we're more than halfway done
so what we're going to do is um, boot from the CD-ROM drive. Uh, the CD-ROM drive will contain a backup and restore tool that will allow us to restore a start um, disk image on the primary hard disk and then we will be able to boot the primary hard disk and uh, finish the installation from there. So more or less how it's done in uh, nowadays as well. You bootstrap a little um, code on your hard disk and then you run it from your hard disk to finish everything. Nowadays um, operating systems might even download stuff during the installation. Um, this um, CD-ROM image of course contains everything we need. Uh, there wasn't much internet access back then and uh, you had to have uh, a full archive of your operating system. Of course there is additional software that is not part of the operating system. For example, we're going to install uh, a basic uh, interpreter, we're going to install a Pascal compiler and a C compiler just to try out a, a few different programming languages. Um, earlier today I started looking for a Ruby interpreter, however there doesn't seem to be anything uh, more or less current at the moment that is available for VMS on VAX. Uh, for that uh, the, the system is probably too old. Uh, there might be images or, or um, archives for Ruby on Alpha or on Itanium. But uh, unfortunately, I don't think we'll be able to run Ruby on this machine, which is a real bummer. <laughs> we'll have to do with more historic languages like Pascal, which I really enjoyed to, to type after more than 20 years. I shouldn't uh, do as much talking because my download has already finished. Tim Morgan asks, do you do Ruby in your day job? Yes, I do very much so. My day job is uh, I'm a CTO of a small company. Uh, we specialize in high performance web hosting um, and we're specialized on two um, content management systems, namely Drupal and WordPress. So most of our customers run either one of these or both even because most of our customers are web agencies who build websites for bigger companies like magazines, newspapers uh, or bigger organizations like um, universities and uh, stuff like that. While they take care of the development and design of these websites, we take care of the 24-7 operation. So we run um, about 550 Linux hosts, some physical, uh, most of them virtual, um, and uh, you can do that with a handful of people only if everything is automated. So um, since we started the company in 2010, we've been automating everything using a configuration management software named Chef. And turns out Chef is not only written in Ruby, it also uses Ruby as its automation language, which I didn't know at the start. I simply used the um, uh, syntax that uh, the Chef documentation told me. And only a bit later I found out, well, Chef scripts are actually Ruby scripts. So I started using um, standard Ruby with loops and conditions and everything. Um, and uh, well, you, as you can imagine, over 10 years, uh, our code base has grown significantly. Um, and um, after two or three years of operation, we decided that um, uh, it's just too much of a hassle asking our customers to um, request changes uh, over our ticket system. So um, we had to develop, and so develop some kind of... Um, uh, user interface and uh, since we were already doing Ruby at that time um, we decided to use Ruby on Rails for that and that's um, now our user dashboard um, on which I do most of the, de the de development um, so on our Tuesday streams which is Ruby Tuesday or Fridays is Friday on Rails you'll often see me working on this application 
uh, based on Ruby on Rails. In part because that's pretty standard stuff what I'm doing, so it's not a very sophisticated software at all. Um, that's why I decided to add a few more interesting tidbits to my stream and that led to uh, Retro Saturday and Exploration Wednesday where I do things that might not be related to Ruby. Okay, so our disk image is back. I'll just rename it so it fits the configuration file. Oh, I'll have to unzip it first. Okay, so um, let's go into open VMS, unzip, vax, VMS, And uh, I guess we can now remove the zip file, not the ISO file. And I think part of the reason why I deleted it is because it has so many uppercase characters. And I'm really not used to that. Um, um, most of the files I'm dealing with are lowercase. So I think I'll rename that to a less conspicuous name. Um, we call it openvms underscore fax underscore 073 and OS is more or less implied so like this and now we'll have to change our configuration file accordingly so that's openvms and even here I had already dropped the uh, OS suffix and let's try another boot VMS open VMS dot ini oh come on it's fax open VMS dot ini and there's no uh, error message now which means we can actually boot DUA3 our CD-ROM drive. So here we are. Everything is a bit slow here and I can only imagine how much slower it would have it would be on actual fax hardware. Um, one of the notable things is I can actually enter today's date, which I wasn't able on the PDP-11 because uh, it couldn't take uh, current years. So let's do that. It's getting restless here. Our operating system, 29 February 2020, and it's 1639 here. So for the PDP-11, I more or less had to um, subtract a few years from today's date and uh, there's a nice trick by subtracting 28 years um, you will not only get um, below the uh, Y2K threshold or something you also uh, have the benefit of having the same weekdays for your dates so um, if you are ever in the situation that you need to have to to pretend it's uh, the past Simply sub subtract 28 years from today's date and you'll be fine. Here we go, we have our hard disks, DUA 0, 1 and 2. DUA3 is our CD-ROM drive and uh, the MUA drives of type TK50 are tape drives. I think we are not going to need them. And now it's asking for a confirmation that everything is there because um, we might have forgotten to spin up a hard disk, for example. So some uh, uh, these hard disks uh, were um, actually replaceable. Uh, so you had a tray that you had to pull out, put the pack of disks inside, um, and then uh, close the, uh, the drawer again, and then hit a, hit a key on, hit a switch on the hard disk 
drive uh, so it would be able to spin up the uh, disks. And now we are at a command prompt. Um, the dollar sign is very significant here. It's uh, the sign that we are dealing with a DCL um, digital command language, I think. Um, prompt here. Uh, the dollar sign has been adopted by Unix as well, but um, it's the typical um, VMS prompt here. And in order to restore our basic operating system, I'm going to use the... Oops. I have to type correctly because this terminal emulation uh, doesn't really tolerate uh, typos. Um, backup. DUA3 VMS 073.b slash save set. That's basically a, a rudimentary backup of the operating system and we'll copy that to um, our hard disk drive DUA0. If you, look, uh, if you look closely, you'll see that there is a colon after the drive symbol. And yes, um, later operating systems named DOS or simu similar um, actually um, uh, took this uh, over. So now we have uh, um, paths like C colon or D colon and uh, back then it was DUA0 colon. So um, that's already done. Um, I guess that would have would have taken a longer time um, back then but now I can simply more or less switch off the machine by going back to the simulation. Um, there's no harm in switching off the machine uh, at this time. Uh, everything has been written to the disk and uh, we can leave the simulation and now we have to switch our boot drive to the hard disk which I'm going to do in the OpenVMS INI file. So um, we still keep the ISO file attached because we'll need to install from the CD-ROM but now I'm going to boot from the disk um, I don't think I'll uh, enable auto boot quite now, so let's simply restart the machine. Vax open vms.ini. It starts the CPU microcode. Thanks to its non volatile RAM that we've attached, um, we don't have to enter the language again. That's stored in NVR. And now I can say boot DUA0. and it'll automatically start the, the rest of the installation routine. I'll have to enter the date again. It's um, 29 February 2020, 1645. And here it says, Tech Vax VMS use is not authorized on this node because we've not yet installed our licenses. Now I'll have to enter a volume label for this system disk and I'm okay with OVMS, OpenVMS VAX Sys, so I'll just press enter. Enter name of drive holding the distribution media, that's DUA3. And it's ready to be mounted, yes. We'll install the library files and the optional files. It tells us um, how much space we have left because, of course, hard disk space was very um, dear back then. I'd like to install the message help database. The help system in um, OpenVMS is really great. I think it's it might be better than the man page system on, on early Unis Unices. Uh, yes, install it wherever you think uh, is good. 
OpenVMS management station files, I don't have to install. That is for uh, management hardware, namely mostly a Windows 95 or Windows NT laptop that you'd attach to the VAX to um, do system management. N uh, neither do I have such a machine, nor do I want to install one. Deck Windows is the graphical in uh, user interface um, that later was ported to um, their to HP Unix, uh, so Altrix in, the, in that case as well. Deck Windows Workstation support, yes. I haven't tried Deck Windows yet, but it doesn't hurt installing it. Do I want to install DeckNet Plus? Yes. And later we are also going to install TCP IP, which doesn't come out of the box. So yeah, we'll install the library, optional help messages, Deck Windows stuff, including fonts and DeckNet Plus. And this will uh, still leave a lot of space on my system disk, so uh, that's perfectly okay. And now it's starting to restore safe sets, so more or less backups, of these packages on my hard disk. Do you want Deck Windows Motif as the default windowing system? Yes, please. Now I'll have to enter a password for system, which I'm going to do. Uh, it's not all too creative what I'm doing here. So would I connect this machine to the internet? I should probably use more creative passwords. The SES node name is um, more or less the host name of the machine, and uh, I call this GVAX. The system ID will be important later uh, if you want to install DECnet, which is Digital's own um, network protocol. Um, I'm not going to install DECnet anyway, but uh, so I'll just uh, enter a valid number. Strangely enough, these numbers are technet addresses in, in disguise uh, and you'll have to calculate them from two key values, but um, we won't get into that. Now it tells me a lot of stuff that I could do. Uh, and. I could now enter my license codes, but that's very tedious entering everything by hand. And uh, the license code actually, or oh, all the license codes for all the products. So the C compiler has its own license code and the Pascal compiler has its own license code. Um, uh, that's easier to install using the script I actually got, um, which uh, has commands for all these things. So later I'm going to upload the license code script and run that, and that will um, automatically install dozens of license code without me having to type a single one. So we are in, I guess, GMT, or we could choose Great Britain R, I'm not sure, let's, do that. Uh, I'm not sure why they think that uh, Ireland is in Great Britain, but um, is daylight savings time in effect? Uh, I th think it is. No, it's not yet. I don't think it is. Differential time factor is zero. The DECnet Plus kit is on DUA3 as everything. And it's ready to be mounted. Go ahead and install. Yeah, defaults for all the options. No, I don't want to review them. And here on the bottom right, you can see a typical file system path 
which is disk dollar wax vms v73 colon and then a directory name in uh, square brackets so it's far from today's slash delimited path names and i had to get used to that in over the recent days Now we're almost done and it's uh, making this terminal an operator's console. And it's going to reboot the machine. The machine will actually not reboot because um, it's not set up to do so. So we'll have to um, restart the simulation. But uh, by making a slight hardware change in the configuration file, I love it when I can change a file to change hardware, um, we can enable the machine to actually boot when it's told to be rebooted by uh, changing an, an actual hardware register named BDR to a value of zero here, um, we can tell the machine to behave differently in terms of reboots and shutdowns. And it'll also um, use a default boot drive from now on. So if we go back into the machine, It's now asking us where the default boot drive is, and that's DUA0. It'll store this in non-volatile RAM and we'll never have to enter boot DUA0 again. I should have made another change to my configuration because I don't want the um, operating system disk to be inserted at this time. So before I log in here, let's quickly go back to the simulator level. The simulation is now stopped. We can detach RQ0. No, not RQ0. Uh, uh, RQ3, our CD-ROM drive. And let's attach the license disk instead. Attach RQ3 open VMS slash license.iso. I should have attached it as read only, but it doesn't really matter. And now we con can continue the simulation with the C command. And now I can log in as system with my system password. And it says license, no license, no license is active for this software product. And with the license disk uh, inserted, now I can uh, remediate that. So what I'm going to do is mount this disk because uh, this disk has been created on my Mac operating system and um, doesn't have the necessary um, uh, identification data that VMS is expecting, I'll use an option and options are uh, uh, started with a slash on OpenVMS, not with a dash or two dashes like on Unix systems. So we'll override this 
So OpenVMS doesn't care about this identification stuff and we'll mount DUA3. Volume is right locked, so OpenVMS uh, knows that this is a, a CD-ROM disk drive, um, so there's no use in making it a write, um, writable volume. And now we are getting into DCL commands. How do I change my directory to um, the CD-ROM drive? Well, that's done with set default. And uh, I can say DUA3. However, that alone doesn't work. I'll have to t tell it the directory as well. And lo and behold, the root directory which is always, uh, directories are always enclosed in square brackets, the root directory on a drive is named 000000 for whatever reason. So now we are in the root directory of our CD-ROM drive and we can use a command that might be familiar to you if you've ever used uh, MS-DOS, which is named dir for the directory uh, listing. And here we have the license file that is actually a DCL script that can be executed. So I'll need to copy that to my um, system drive with the copy command, which is also available on MS-DOS. And I'll call it, uh, it'll copy the hobbyist use only va.txt. The semicolon um, one is actually a version indicator. So if I make changes to this file, there will be a file with the same name, only with a semicolon two at the end. And I'll copy that to my login drive. And um, OpenVMS uses uh, symbols or, um, yeah, it's, it's more or less uh, logical symbols that um, are basically aliases for important parts of your file system. So uh, in this case, my login drive is always Swiss dollar login, uh, regardless of how the device uh, is named. So I don't have to enter something that starts with DUA0, because that's my system drive. Um, Swiss dollar login will automatically um, choose the right um, file system location. So let's copy that there. And now we'll change there by set default. And um, in DCL, you can always abbreviate commands as long as they are unambiguous. So instead of typing set default, I can simply say set def. And again, use sys login. Now I'm in my login directory. And there's a lot of stuff in here. Um, and uh, my license should be there as well. I'll rename that to a more uh, fitting name. So instead of hobbyist use only va.txt semicolon one, I'll call it packs.com. And again, uh, it's similar to Microsoft DOS, uh, .com files are executable. So uh, by changing the extension from .txt to .com, um, suddenly the operating system knows that this can be um, executed. And I can execute that with the command at packs.com. And I'm not really sure if this is going to show um, specific data that uh, is only uh, available to me. So for that, I'll simply uh, switch scenes quickly and I'll execute that and it tells me it doesn't work. Why doesn't it work though? So that's really strange. What did I do wrong? Oh yes, um, I missed one thing. 
and that is um, since I've um, installed this file from a CD-ROM drive, it doesn't have the uh, correct uh, the correct uh, file attributes. So I'll have to set file attributes, which I do with set file slash attribute and the RFM attribute needs to be set to stream or short STM. And that now should be okay to execute. Yes, it is. Now it's running a lot of license commands, dozens of license commands for all kinds of products I can install. That's more like hundreds, I guess. And we're done. So, um, with the command show license, I can uh, list all the licenses that are here. And you can see there is a UCP IP client, Vax VMS, Vax cluster package, um, X25, another um, communication protocol, uh, and all kinds of stuff. Um, I'm not sure, can I actually say something like um, show license slash paged or so? Look at that! I just guessed it. Um, so uh, with the slash paged options, I get um, a nice uh, paging here. And with return or space, I can scroll to this and we can see there's ACMS, ADA, the programming language, audio kit. I wonder what that is. We have basic and C. We have DCE app development, Motif in all kinds of languages. So Motif is the graphical user interface. Uh, forms, Fortran. I've never programmed a single line for Fortran. Macro 64 is, I think, a macro assembler. So we could even do VAX assembler here. And I think the uh, assembler instruction set uh, for the VAX is pretty, pretty nice, actually. And here we are. Okay, so uh, now we can dismount our CD-ROM drive, DUA3. And that's that. Now, we have two more hard disks that we need to format and add to the system. So I'll do a initialize DUA1 as data1. That's the format. That's pretty quick. Probably would have taken a minute or two on real hardware. And I can mount that. I think it's mount slash system DUA1 data1. And we'll do the same for DUA2. As data2. So that's the volume label. And uh, we can mount it. DUA2 as data2. However, I don't want to enter that all the time when the system starts. So, um, as you might guess yourself, uh, we'll have to add it to a configuration file on the system. And for, uh, for this, uh, uh, for this, I'll need the editor. And for the editor to work, I'll need to set the terminal emulation differently, because at the moment, if I do a show terminal slash full, you can see up there uh, it's uh, saying it's a VT two hundred system series uh, terminal and uh, the VT200 has different um, terminal commands internally uh, than the uh, terminal I'm using at the moment. So um, we'll set it to the more compatible VT100. And now I can use the full screen editor to modify a file that's 
on the sys manager storage uh, named su sys startup but uh, you need to be careful that you don't type a double s underscore vms.com it's another com file that's executable but it's a text file oops I mistyped that because um, this needs to be a dollar sign here. So it's dollar manager and then the colon uh, separates the file name. And here we are in a full screen editor. So it's not as uh, archaic as the PDP 11 last week, where we didn't even have a full screen editor. And um, I'll have to enter my mount commands uh, at a certain point and uh, I choose to ed uh, enter insert this uh, after the basic setup uh, that's a system-wide login command procedure things like that I think should be done before I mount my drives setup date time format that's very basic um, but the queue manager that's probably for print queues um, isn't as important so I'll use this space here to enter a, um, a com uh, comment which is uh, led by a dollar exclamation mark and then by simply entering a dollar sign I can add a command here and we'll add the mount commands in here. So um, we'll do a mount slash system DUA1 to data1 and mount slash system DUA2 as data2. And another line of comments just to separate that. And that's that. I could as well um, set my terminal emulation here, but I'll do that in my personal um, login script, which also exists. We'll do that later. And in order to save this, I simply uh, use command Z. Oops. That should have done it, I think. All right. And uh, another maintenance thing that we could do is start a routine that uh, decompresses the library files, which speeds up things a, a little bit. So uh, um, I'll execute from the sys update um, file system the libdecomp.com file. And I choose decompress everything, A for all, and this will take a minute. And uh, since we have enough dis disk space, um, why not decompress everything so it can be accessed quicker, qu more quickly, quicklier.
So the next thing I'm going to do is create an actual user account for myself so I don't have to do everything as the system user. For that I'll change my directory to sys-system and run the authorized procedure. Now I'm in the user administration fuckery. No idea what UAF actually means. Um, and we'll add a user called gbiz with a password equals temp for a temporary password because I'll have to change that password anyway when I log in for the first time. Owner Oops, my own name. I'll create this on the DUA1 drive. Since we have more than one drive, we can make use of the disk space we have. We'll call the directory GWIS. And as always, directories are in square brackets. The user ID is a pair of numbers and we'll use 200, 201. And for the flag, I use no this user and this user is going to have all privileges, which is more or less administrator rights. So I don't have to change the system account for each and every change I'd like to make. I can simply elevate my privileges to system from my own user account. So now I've added a user, which has also caused a security alarm and security audit entry, um, which is also interesting. So um, on a multi-user system like this, um, a logged in administrator would have gotten this security alarm that someone else just created a user account. And um, now I'll have to create the home directory, actually. And this is done with the create command. And since I want to create a directory, I'll add that as a option. I can even um, append that without any uh, separating space. Create directory. DUA1 is the device, colon after the device name, and then square brackets around the directory. Oops. Do we still have to do this space? No. What's wrong? Directory. Oh, of course. I've made the same mistake earlier. I'm still in the UAF and I can't actually create directories from the UAF, from the user management. So I use Control Z to exit. And now I can use normal DCL commands. Create directory DUA1 GBIS and now for the permissions, set directory slash owner equals gwiz dua1 gwiz. Now I own this directory. And before I switch to my own user account, uh, Let's take a look at the system itself. We can use the show system command to get a bit of information on the machine that we are running at the moment. So we are running OpenVMS 7.3. Uptime has been 21 minutes. Here's information about the CPU. It's a simulated VAC server 3900. Multiprocessing is disabled at the moment. And memory should be half a gig. We have 512 megabytes. 
of main memory. And that's uh, a million pages, of which most of are free. And there are two paging files, so uh, there's a swap file and a page file. So um, that's an indication of um, where the name VMS comes from. Virtual memory system. So we have an additional 200,000 pages in our page file here. Interesting. All right then, um, now I'd like to do something practical and for that I need to install software. How do we do that? Well, first of all, we'll have to mount the um, software disk. Uh, so I'll take a look at the device DUA3. It's online, but not mounted, I think. Show device DA3 slash full. No, it's not mounted, so I can quickly switch back to the emulation, walk over to my disk drive and insert my software disk, simply by um, attaching RQ3 to open VMS slash software dot ISO and continue back in the simulation. And um, now we can mount this disk, mount slash, no, I think mount DUA3 should be enough. Oh no. Uh, I'll have to do a mount override identification DUA3. Here we go. Hey Diego, how you doing? You were watching yesterday's stream. Finished now. Thanks for, for the praise. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope um, my uh, refactoring was instructional. Um, so now our CD-ROM is mounted, so let's take a look at it. Set default DUA3 home directory or root directory. And here we have all kinds of stuff. We have a ADA, we have a basic compiler, we have a COBOL compiler, uh, we have F77, which is Fortran, and Pascal. So, um, we are installing a few of them, um, but as you can see, there are zip files and we'll have to also install a uh, unzip tool to be able to even access these files. So what I'm going to do is create a directory on DUA1, create slash directory DUA1 temp and we'll copy a few things there. We'll copy the basic compiler. We'll copy the C compiler. And we're going to compile, uh, use the Pascal compiler. We call, uh, use this Pascal Vax V60 here. I'm glad to, to see that it was instructional. It was a lot of fun too. Okay, and of course we'll need the unzip um, tool. 
and that's this uh, Vax Unzip 2005 EXE and I'll copy that to the system directory so sys dollar system And by the way, if uh, you'd like to see what sys dollar system actually means, we can show symbols. I don't quite remember. I'd have to look though ahead and install things. And I can define a command myself, uh, a shortcut basically, or an alias for, and then it's sys dollar system colon to uh, simply use unzip as a command, and that work temp, and let's unzip them. Uh, let's start with the. Itself, because that way uh, the files on say my Mac and then um, reboots and uh, VMS couldn't make any sense of the files. So that's the C compiler. Uh, 39.zip and the Pascal Go ahead and install this. The installation command that I'm using comes from sysupdate and is called VMS install with a single L because um, I don't know. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Anyway, um, I'll start with installing the C compiler, which is CC064. Nope. Uh, what did I do wrong here? Should have written this down. Give me a second. Probably just a ah yes of course okay so uh, I'll have to pre prepend that with an at see okay um, now it asks me if I did make an update of my system disk now that I'm going to destroy everything. Well, I am satisfied. Um, I don't think anything will go wrong. Famous last words. Um, the distribution volumes are mounted on DUA1 temp. I could have probably installed everything from the CD-ROM. Enter installation options. Well, I don't have any. Now it's going to install the C compiler version 6.4 from 2001. Uh, it does have an authorization, authorization key already registered. And we don't need post trip manuals and stuff like that because I'm never going to read that on this machine uh, directly. So let's save the disk space. And yes, I want to run the uh, installation verification procedure.
This starlet.c file here at the bottom is interesting because um, that's uh, a remainder of uh, an of a CPU architecture that DEC was working on, uh, named Starlet, uh, and VMS still has this uh, has a reference to this name at different places. Files will now be moved to their target directories. So even on this simulated hardware on a very powerful machine here, um, this is taking a few minutes. Uh, imagine running that on the original hardware with uh, original hard drive technology. Um, simply installing the C compiler could easily have taken 15-20 uh, minutes, I think. And that's that. The C compiler is installed. Let's do the same about the Pascal compiler. So um, it's basic 039 and Pascal 060. Um, so add sys update VMS install. Maybe we can even uh, install both of them. Uh, I'm not going to try. So let's start with Pascal 060. DA1 temp. Here we go. Pascal compiler, yes. Pascal definition files, yes. Pascal example programs, okay. And yes, there is an authorization key. Now we have a starlet.paz. I'm pretty sure starlet.something is a very central library type, and uh, it seems like every of these, uh, uh, all these languages have their own version of that library. So there was a starlet.c earlier, now we have a starlet.paz. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a starlet.baz too when we install the um, basic compiler. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, install basic, basic 039. Um, <laughs> okay, here we have uh, an actual uh, indication of how long this is going to take. Um, I could perform a complete installation of Compact Basic, or I could choose to install only the systems defin system definitions text library only, which will uh, then only take 10 to 45 minutes. So um, I guess installation of the whole basic package would easily have taken a half hour or, or an, a, a full hour. That's... it boggles the mind. And yeah, I, I am confident enough that I choose option one here. I don't think it'll hold us for longer than a few minutes. Uh, help files, yes please. System definitions. Oh, that's what takes uh, that long, so we don't install them. We don't have to install them. Sample graphics programs? No, we don't need them. I don't have a graphics terminal at the moment. Anyway, motif definitions? Yes, if you say so. And that's that. I'd say let's try these languages. And for that I log out. And use my newly created own. Uh, user account. What? 
password is too easy to guess. Please choose another string. Come on. Okay, here we go. And we should be in my home directory. I can um, request that by saying, not saying set default, but show default. And yes, we are on DUA1 in the GVIS home directory. So let's try uh, the three languages. Um, which one shall we start? Pascal, Basic, or Z? What would you uh, would you like to see first? <laughs> no, that's not Unix. Uh, create slash directory basic. Insufficient privilege. I can't even create directories in my own home directory. That's very strange. Show directory DUA1 GUS. Uh, is this on dear? No files found. Uh, is dot dear. No files found. Uh, that's strange. I remember trying these languages and creating directories but i'm not sure if i did it in my own home directory and if i'm i might have missed a command when i set up my home directory that's strange can i create a file here edit test.txt oh let's set the terminal emulation first edit test.txt Test Control Z. Yes. Okay, I can create files. Why can't I create directories? Create dir DUA one GWIS dot basic. Huh, that works. Okay, so as you can see, um, the directory part of the um, file system. Uh, uh, location is in square brackets and directory names are separated by dots instead of slashes. And yes, there is a basic.dir which is a directory. So let's create the same for C. And Pascal. Okay, and I guess I'll start with basic. So set default basic should get me in here. Nice, nothing here so far. So um, let's create our first basic program. Edit hello.baz. And uh, let's Oh, I don't actually need to create a file. I can use the uh, basic interpreter um, directly. So I simply call basic and I'm in Vax basic version 3.9 and I can say 10 print hello world. And now I can run this program and it has the traditional greeting hello.world. We could try and um, uh, use a file. I don't think I've tried that yet, but let's see. So um, let's do edit hello.baz 10 print hello world. Save that. File name for buffer main. I thought I told you to 
call it hello.baz, but yeah, of course. Can't save it, huh? Strange. Oh! How am I in DUA1 basic and not in DUA1 gvis.basic? Yeah, I think I made a mistake here. Uh, set dev DUA1 gvis dot basic. Okay. Yeah, I should ha shouldn't have uh, ignored the error messages earlier. Directory not found. So, uh, actually, yeah, that's something I've discovered um, too. You can change into a directory that that does not yet exist, for example, because it's not yet mounted from a device, and uh, then you can um, mount the device and to to set things right. So, um, I more than once I did a set dev. DUA3 to get on uh, onto the CD-ROM without having it mounted first. I got a, an error message, but um, um, after mounting DUA3, I could start working right away. I didn't have to change into it uh, again. So that's a bit strange, but um, you get used to it. And uh, now we are in a, an actual directory where we can create files. So let's do that. Um, hello, Baz, 10, print. Hello world. Let's save it. One line written. And now can I call basic hello.baz? No, I can't. Or can I? Actually, it created an object file. So this is a basic compiler. And it created an actual object file with um, the um, code. And if I link this object file with the necessary system libraries, I get an actually hello.exe, which I can actually uh, run with the hello with the run command. So um, I can create standalone basic. Uh, I can create standalone commands written in basic. And let's do the same uh, in C, which would be the traditional way to greet the world in on a Unix system. So I'll change directory to, um, does this work? Yes, it does. Okay. Nothing here yet. So let's edit hello.c. And um, we'll have to include standard IO dot H uh, int main with no arguments printf hello world and uh, now I can compile this and again we get an object file that I can that I can pass on to the linker. which gives me an exe file that I can run. And just to prove that uh, there are a lot of ways to do this, let's do it in Pascal. Set def gvis.pascal. Edit hello paz. Program. Hello, input, output, begin, right line, hello world, end dot, Pascal, hello, pass. Same thing, I get an object file link hello 
object gives me an exe file that I can execute. And that, my friends, has been how to install OpenVMS on a Vax server 3900, even though it's only um, simulated. Would I have a, a Vax 3900 running in this room? I would have probably had a lot of audio issues because these machines are really, really loud and draw a lot of power. Um, so I'm pretty, uh, pretty happy that applications like SimH exist that allow us to try these things without a lot of effort, without having to have uh, three people carry up a machine to the first floor and uh, uh, start with laying three-phase power to, to even switch it on. Yeah, it's been fun, and um, I'm pretty happy to have it working. I might try a few more things running this system, so I'll definitely keep it uh, as it is at the moment. I hope it was fun for you too. Let's do a short Q&A session if there is anything you'd like to ask. Um, then uh, this is the time for it. And uh, if there is something that comes to you later, uh, you can always join my Discord server. Here's the URL and I'll be happy to welcome you there and we can chat um, while I'm not streaming. Okay, uh, I don't think there's anything else. And if there isn't anything that you'd like to ask, I'd like to wrap this up now. As always, if you don't yet follow the stream, follow the channel, uh, please do so. You'll get a notification when I go online, which is probably going to be uh, thirst idiot. Um, Tuesday night. We'll have another Ruby Tuesday at uh, 8 p.m. GMT. And uh, if you like, also follow my Twitter account, at Chibiz. I have the same uh, username on the micro.blog um, ecosystem. So, um, yeah, I hope you had fun. Have a great weekend. Thanks for watching. Take care.